Hello folks, Scott Grove here. What we're going to do today is get through a bunch of uh, fun, heavy bass stuff. We're going to do a lot of solo type stuff, a lot of really fast um, rock, metal, ska, um, everything you can think of, but a lot of it's going to be very noty, very busy, solo oriented, uh, lots of really fast stuff you're doing uh, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, and thirty-second notes. What are those? Those are uh, progressively faster. So that's what those are. <laughs> anyway, so here comes a few clips of some of the licks that you will learn in this particular video. They're coming up right now. <laughs> Okay, so there's just an example of a bunch of the licks that you're going to learn, plus a heck of a lot more. Like I said, we're going to be doing some metal stuff. We've got distortion that we're going to add to the bass on just one segment, just for fun. Um, we're going to do basically some lead guitar work on some of this stuff too. We're going to do some very heavy stuff. We are going to do everything that you just saw and more. So anyway, once again, Scott Grove, if you're up for the challenge, get this particular video uh you're just gonna love it it's uh got tons of backing tracks in it so you can play along i play with it you play with it you get to play by yourself with it so there's four different backing tracks in here for you to jam with so uh you basically got your own band here to work with <laughs> okay so enjoy and away we go all right this first set of um licks that we're going to put together uh, to do all these different runs and different licks. We're going to concentrate on being uh, quite busy, actually. Uh, a lot of your rock and metal groups tend to be a lot smaller, so a uh, bass player has to do a lot more to carry the bottom end of it and to keep things happening while possibly the one and only guitar player is uh, off soloing. So you have to keep some rhythm going. You have to keep a lot of movement going. Okay, so you basically have to be busy. Okay, it also requires a lot of uh, 16th notes. By that I mean, um, I'll just give you an example. Let's get a drum track going. And it's going to require a pick. <laughs> okay, so you've got a beat going like this. Eight, if you do the eighth note, it would just be. Now, 16th notes could be twice that. Okay, 
so these sixteenth notes are going to be quite a big chunk of a lot of this. Um, just like I said, because you're going to have drummers with double basses and all this stuff going on, and you have to keep track with that double bass. So he's sitting there going with his bass drum. You get to do the same thing. You guys have to mirror each other. Okay. So right now we're just going to work out of the key of E. We're working on a four-string bass today. Okay. So um, if you're playing a five-string, of course, all you got to do is uh, transpose anything you want anywhere you want. But right now we're going to work out of the key of E. Okay. Um, right now we're just going to work on trying to get those 16th notes happening. Again, with your pick, because nobody has, hardly anybody has, the speed to get 16th notes without a pick. Okay, so... Down, up, 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 down, up. And you get that going. And just keep getting that faster and faster till you get it to the tempo of your track or to whatever you're playing with. Okay, so it is just a bunch of that. Um, again, eighth notes are just half of that. have their place as do quarter notes or hold it one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four okay so again quarter notes each get one note these are whole notes actually so you get one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four okay eighth notes one and two and one and two or one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and then you fill it up with the sixteenth notes play it on every single note, da, 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 da. okay? So, depending on if this song is really honking on, whatever it may be, you could be uh, <laughs> hurting yourself. Um, a lot of you like to wear your bass really low. Sometimes that makes it hard, but it looks cool. So, wear it where it's comfortable and work it down to where it looks cool um, after you get the technique, okay? Because you can get carpal tunnel and all that stuff really easy if you wear it way down too low, okay? You can wear your pants to your ankles, but not your base. <laughs> and okay, so now what we're gonna do in the key of E is teach you the basics of hard rock and metal, and they tend to be uh, basically in minor keys for the most part. Even the bass uh, can still work out of these minor keys. So you've got open E and your two note or your F sharp. Now your three note would actually normally be your G sharp. So if you're doing a scale. Okay, but instead of one, two, three, we're actually gonna flat the three, which means take it down one. Okay. I know you're gonna get that out of it. But that is your minor third. That just means to take the three at it. So that is how you get A minor. So if the band is playing in E, there's your minor. Okay, so a lot of the bass players work out of these minors. That just makes for a darker, more evil type sound, if you will. Okay, so it lends itself more to um, the bass part. Even if the guitar player is not playing in minor, you still have the luxury of going there because they are passing notes, meaning they just pass by so fast that the rules and laws of physics and uh, music rules uh, no longer apply. <laughs> it's just music. Nothing applies here. Okay, so if you were to actually play open E and then your minor third or your third fret on your G string or on your E string, that makes it a G note, and then F sharp. Second fret. Okay, so I want you to actually go. Okay, and what we're doing there is quarter notes. Or actually, 
eighth notes, I'm sorry. But what we're going to do is, instead of keeping them so open sounding, like this, I'm going to want you to take the bottom part of your hand here, the meat of your palm of your hand, and actually lay it against the string. Okay, so lay it against your low E string, not on top of the bridge, but really close to it. So you're going to play with your pick, keep moving your hand back until it gets muted sounding. You can hear the note, but it's not going, it's not doing that. Okay, that clarity is great later on, but for right now, we want to get down and sinister. So what I want to get to is... Okay, so that sound you're familiar with. So that's how we get that, is by dampening that string down here, or muting it right down close to the bridge. So now, I want you to go E, G, F sharp, E. And try to build up that speed, okay? So that is your first thing to work on, is just try to work up that speed. then come right back to me whenever you get it. Okay, it's not going to come overnight. Um, the other things we're going to be doing with this is actually... We're going to go up to our 16th notes. That's where it gets heavy, heavy duty. But right now we're doing the 8th. So we're going to be working on this stuff. Okay, so that's the kind of stuff we're going to work on. So right now, along with this particular drum track, I want you to work on that. Okay, so there's where you get to play, and now I'll be back in. Your turn. And together. Okay, so that's how fast we're going to go right off the get-go, is working that fast. Okay, the next part of this, we're going to keep throwing, I'm going to keep throwing licks at you, these little, little sniglets here, and we're going to piece them all together to start forming bass lines. And then you get to work on your own to create things that are your own. Okay, so you have this one. Now we're going to change it up slightly and go, instead of backwards or down, we're going to go up. Okay, we have a stretch here. That's open E, open E, sorry, excuse me, third fret, then fifth fret. Okay. Okay, reason you're not seeing my hand here is I'm not rich, I don't have split screens, so I'll try to get it here. Again, I'm still muting. So you have two options already. Now I want to do the same thing, but I want to go using the fifth and seventh fret. So your next set of dots. Still all on the low E string. So each note, each time you hit it, something else is happening with your left hand. So, so every time you pick it, you're changing fingers. Okay, so you really got to work all your hands then. 
and now the new one with open 5 7 meaning open string fifth fret 5 7 being seventh fret Okay, so we're getting all over the place now. We're not even halfway done with just being in the key of E. Okay, so you have those options now. You can already make stuff. Now here's where we start having fun. We'll put them all together in just a second. Now we're actually going to use the low E string. And where we did the 5, 7, I want you to do that instead of on the low E string. I still want you to hit the low E first, but then I want you to hit 5-7 on your next string down, your A string. And it's okay if that low string rings. Reason being, because we are actually hitting E, then D, and then finally E again. So now you have two E's ringing at the same time. Here's no muting. You mute it. What was that? Bum bum bum. Same thing you did before. So now we're putting things together. Okay, that was. So your 5-7 on your E, then 5-7 on your A, and then your open E. Okay, so all of a sudden things are starting to come together. So work a while, piece all of these together. So you can do all kinds of things. I will play just something, make it up off the top of my head with that drum beat. Using only what we've learned. Now we have just a whole bunch of stuff going on. You can, if the song rides that long, writing means stays in that same key or that same chord all the time in E until it's time to switch to another chord. You have all those different things to do. Okay? Now I'm going to show you a couple of more while you're there. Um, while we are in the key V, we need to incorporate your other two strings. Okay? So we can use all four of them. Okay, to do this, okay, it's going to be on the D string. Okay, we're going to go, okay, so that is 7 9, 7 9 means 7th fret, 9th fret, doing what's called a hammer on. You play it once with your pick, and you hammer on your pick to the 9th fret, so 7 9. Same thing on your G string. Now that last note you hit is your E again. So if you hit your low E, okay, so you have all this to go. Now if you do that backwards, starting from the ninth fret, okay, one more addition to our D string. So that's playing those two backwards. Now, go down to the fifth fret on your D string. And finally end up on your seventh fret on your A string. And that is E again. You can hit your low E string after it. So if you're... Okay, 
That was no more than what I've showed you, except for I am playing the notes in a different order. Okay, so it is up to you to explore all the possibilities. Um, like I said, I'm going to lay out all of these things here for you to build with. Okay, so, so far we have... Nothing different other than the notes I have shown you. You have to figure out what orders you want them to go in. Don't copy everybody's music all the time. Make up some of your own. But by messing around with the notes that I've shown you, these are the notes that you're allowed to play in the key of E. Okay? So once again... Okay, so those are all the notes. So all kinds of little pieces all put together to show you all the notes. Again with the drum track, I'll add in some of those new notes. going up to 16th notes, making that... Okay, so you're really honking on. So that really takes some... Some really honking on to get that happening. <laughs> Again, so what I showed you early... Okay, I'd actually moved up to 30 second notes, uh, just because I can. <laughs> 30 second means you're doing it twice as fast as those 16th notes. 16th notes again are, are the... There's your 30 second notes. But 16th... <laughs> okay, so that's how you do these in the key of E. Now, if we were to go ahead and move, um, like say, up to A from there, um, you're going to do everything the same. Okay, so now you're on A. So, that's right, your next string down. Everything applies, it looks exactly the same. but then you run out of strings. Okay, so what do you do? The only place you can go. <laughs> okay, sorry for kicking everything here. But you'll see 12th fret, so you're actually going up to the 14th fret on your G string. So that's your A. So we went from... Okay, up closer. up to that if you want to do that kind of thing it may not be your cup of tea but that's where you can grab it at okay so if we move to a I'll just do the same thing out of E up to a so we're in E now I'm gonna go to a
that is uh, some pretty heavy stuff. So you're working out of open strings. By open strings, you're working out of E. You're working out of A. So it makes it easy to do that kind of stuff. And to make cool stuff. But what happens if you're not playing in an open key? Like say you're playing in the key of C. Okay, so where's our C? That's right, we better know. <laughs> okay, so third fret on your A string. I want you to do it with your ring finger, okay? Because um, this kind of style of playing is basically you're working at, out of things backward, you're building, okay? So you're gonna sneak up from behind the notes. Otherwise, if you were doing like country or something, you would be starting with your first finger. doing that kind of thing but we're going to sneak up on the note instead of starting where we're supposed to and then moving up we're going to sneak up kind of like or if anybody's familiar with jaws out there we're going to sneak up and eat these people okay so in the key of c again with your ring finger again you decide the kind of tone you like if you don't like a You can just mess with your tone however you want. Like I said, you can leave it open. Or you can mute it. So depending on what you like, just do what you like. Okay, so in C, okay, we're gonna use, like I said, our ring finger. Now to sneak up on that, we're gonna use our first finger two frets back. Or if your fingers are short like mine, I actually have to, a lot of times, just because my fingers get sore, I'll go ahead, instead of using my ring finger, I'll use my pinky. Now, it's not always going to be this do -de 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 stuff. I am just showing you some ways um, to get to it. You can sit there and honk on that thing all day long. And you don't have to, you know, do that thing all the time. Uh, it's just there as an example, okay? So just use these as examples. Make up your own shiznit, okay? <laughs> okay, now here's what we couldn't do before, is we're sneaking up on the notes. We did it up here in E. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing in C. Then. So doing first fret, third fret on your low E string. Once again. Then same thing on your A. So just like what we were doing. Okay. So if you're like. another bit of phrasing so it's just how you play it how you say it how you say it or how you say it that is changing the phrasing okay so instead of so, called phrasing. It's the same notes, but you phrased it different. Instead of saying, Gee! you say, Gee! that's phrasing. You're changing it, okay? So that's what we're doing. So in the key of C, you have all kinds of places to go. Again, we've just began to scratch the surface, but you already know what to do from here on out because of what we did with the E. Now we can go... same little thing so if you ever need to know where your octaves are octaves meaning the same note but higher so there's your C use your pinky skip over whatever string is in the middle skip over a string and go two frets higher so you have and then skip over your D string and then go two frets higher 
both the same note. So then you can operate from that note backwards. The same way we did in E. Now we're in C. Okay, so the same notes, you're just uh, finding ways around them now. So you have in C. Okay. So if you ever need any runs or licks, you can do them that way. They're right there. So same as they were before. So they're always going to look the same. Okay, so you have a good old standby. With the same drum beat again in the key of C, we're going to play it. So it's just more of the same thing, but just in different places. Okay? So that's the way you sneak up on these things. And in the key of C, like I said, that flatted third thing, the minor. Now, like we were doing, we've all of a sudden lost that, haven't we? No. Go to C. Now we're going to where the Cowboys play. Now you're going to almost need your pinky, unless you have really long fingers. So you're on the third fret, then go up to the sixth, then fifth. So just like an E, but now you're having to. Okay, so that's another way to get that back again. Okay, so if you're wanting that part, you can go back and get it. so you can get back to it. So that's the way you do it. You just start with your first finger, then stretch everything. If you're in G, then C or D, C, and G. And that's another cool thing about being way down low. If you're gonna grab that G, instead of going Slide it. Just use one finger. Just look cool. Because it does sound different than. Because you you're hitting it. the other fret in the middle. You're not skipping it like you would here. Now you're good. So you can actually slide into it, that just makes it really cool. And another very cool thing, really quick, uh, as far as this stuff goes, then we'll actually move on to some other stuff, and um, it's always the octave. If you can't get, I know you can always get it here. I'm starting in G now, so for, uh, third fret on your low E string. Um, instead of skipping a string and going ahead two frets like I showed you before, Remember, that is a third fret. If you go all the way up to your 12th fret, that's where your bass starts over again. So you count there again, start over, that's zero, because that's like being open. Then one, two, three more frets up, back to your first dot again, as far as you're concerned. It's actually the 15th fret. Okay, so if you got a G here, you've got another one there, all the way at the 15th. So it's just like starting over right there. And you go back up to your first dot again. So, so anytime if you want to.
ways to slide and get right back to that same note and never leave the string. Okay, but watch how you do it until you get some calluses um, because it will feel like rope burn in gym class. You know, you go sliding down a rope too fast, your fingers are going to burn. Same thing here, you go sliding too much, uh, unless you put some uh, lotion, boys, uh, something's going to hurt. <laughs> okay? So you keep doing this too much, something's going to get hurt unless you uh, take care of it. Okay? So by taking care of it, I mean get some calluses on there. Uh, play often, play every day work up some calluses on your fingers okay so once again with that drum beat you can play any little thing you want to okay what I'm gonna do in various parts of this instead of waiting and putting a whole bunch of drum beats at the very end I'm gonna let this track this drum track play from front to end and I want you to work with all this stuff in different keys blah 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 all the way down the line I'm gonna give you this drum track to practice with okay so it's coming at you. I want you to work on all the stuff first and get familiar with it. Then come back and play with this dude. This is about the fastest one we're going to do. We might have one faster today. But, okay. So here comes your drum track. Remember that it's, you know, at this point in the video. And come back and play with this. Since we've been messing with this the whole time, then we'll go on a whole new concept, all right? So here comes your drum, drum track from beginning to end. This is three minutes long. Okay, so you get three minutes. Here we go. We have an intro too.
mind your crash and burn. So anyway, work with that as much as you can. Okay, this uh, great little track really moving on. Man, I think it's honking on. <laughs> okay, so once again, use all them licks I showed you. Cram them in there over and over and over and over until you just can't stand it no more. Then put it on again. Okay, we're getting ready to switch gears. <laughs> okay, welcome back. What we're going to do now is actually go on a little ska tirade. Uh, it's just a different type of a beat. Um, just for uh, the sake of showing you when to um, stop. <laughs> uh, we've been concentrating on going full steam ahead. Uh, we're still going to be doing the same type of licks, but we're going to show you how to kind of control yourself, how to put in some actual taste, some flavor, some flavor flav. No, we're not getting into the rap stuff. <laughs> okay, but what I mean, uh, check out the beat and I'll show you what I mean by controlling what we're doing. We're still going to be quite noty, but then we have to chop it off, we have to rest somewhere. Okay? So here's the beat we're dealing with. I'm going to work out of the key of D. Something like this. basic ideas when to shut the heck up okay so we're gonna work on basically taste okay um, what I'm doing here is a lot of the same type of stuff we've been doing before like I said we're back in the key of D this time just for something different so we're gonna go to the A string okay so we're gonna be using our like I said we sneak up on these things so we're gonna be using our ring finger fifth fret on your A string Okay, these are the licks I'm going to show you again, uh, but we're going to, uh, like I said, show them to you with something different. So this makes you think differently about how you can play things. You could play these with the other licks that we just did or the other drum style we just did. Okay, so in the key of D for something different, okay, we're going to go that D note, then again, pull off to the third fret. To the A note, which is fifth fret on your low E string, and then do C D again. This here's actually part of a kiss song. <laughs> okay, um, it's actually okay. Once again. And stop. You kill it. Whatever. With your hand down here. I like uh, the sound of this bass. Kind of open. Okay. I'm actually going to show you that entire little uh, riff. Okay, like I said, this is a little Gene Simmons thing. Um, so... We're doing a little bit of kiss here, actually, but with a really funky ska drum track. Okay? Anything goes, man. We're just jamming. Okay, so there's your riff again. Now we're going to go. Okay, so that's 5, 3, 5 on your A. 5, 3, 5, meaning 5th fret, 3rd fret, 5th fret. Okay? Okay, so 5, 3, 5. So then we go to the 3rd fret on the D string. 
then we're coming right back to the fifth fret on the A. Okay, so. Okay, that part. Okay, let's do what we have so far. Okay, now we've got one more really quick lick. We cover some quick ground here. Okay, so just when you think jeans might be a slouch on the bass, nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's arrogant, but he knows what he's doing. Okay, that is. So you're on the low E string, 3 5, 3 5 being your frets. Hammer on. Then third fret, skip all the way up to the D string. And then back to your fifth fret on your A string. Okay? It's that quick. Okay, again. Okay, so slowly the whole thing is. Okay, one more time. Okay, so that is a cool lick. It is a classic. Good old Detroit Rock City, you know, going on. But like I said, we're mixing it in with this ska thing. And I'm not wanting you to play it exactly that way. I want you to know that cool lick. It's just something to work with, okay? Again, I will kind of use that in here. I'll use the exact same thing to show you that it can be cool. teaches you that is getting funky with it that's a stretch but that's what it's all about uh, just making junk up but that is cool there man you could pass that off as your own and nobody would even know you stole it from him but it just gives you some discipline by having to stop instead of like we were doing at the beginning so now we're breaking it up okay that's simply all we're doing is just breaking this up some Okay, so that is the basic lick I'm using for this, and that you'll be using too. Um, another thing I want to show you is a quick little thing. Um, on your, since we're in the key of D, um, it don't matter what key you're in, but always use your D string for reference. And since we're in the key of D, this will make it easy. Um, what is D? That's right, you got an open D, so how do you find a higher? Right up to the 12th fret, right? So you're on your D string up to the 12th fret. Okay, I want you to do it with your middle finger. And then... That's right. I want you to put at the 11th fret your first finger. Okay, so you have those two. I want you to hit them both at the same time. But I want you to start with the whole thing back one fret. So you're at the 11th and 10th inside the whole thing while they're still ringing up to the 12th and 11th fret so okay so if you're in D you can add that So it's something to add. If you want those real quick, the rest of the way to finish these out, like I said, you'll always use your D string for reference on any of these if you're in E. So you'd be here.
Okay, so to finish this up in D, then we would actually go up to the 14th and the 12th. And then move the whole thing up two frets. So you're at the 16th and 14th. this at, just to get off the subject for a second, is in the key of A. So you have an open A string. On the D string now you have to find your A. So there it is on the 7th fret. You make that same little thing again. So now you've got your low A, and you can then so you're almost playing it like a guitar. If you really want to go way up higher, same thing, but just an octave higher. Okay, if you want that kind of stuff. Okay, so now you're all the way up here to the 19th and 18th fret. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. With your low A. And you're just putting your ring finger down. Okay, there on the 19th. And then letting back off to the 18th. Okay, so that's all that is. You can even put your pinky all the way up here to the 21st fret. And E. So it always stays the same. Okay, so back on track. We were doing, that's just some fun stuff. So you're in D. So you could do any of those, either the first one or the last one, and slide up to it. And if you want to. It's just another thing to toss in your arsenal. I'm grabbing a drink. You might as well, too. Okay. So back to what we were doing. I'll get the drum beat again. Okay. So you don't have to stick with it, of course. Just use pieces. Okay, I don't know if you've ever heard Ballroom Blitz by Sweet. They did it again, uh, Tia Carrera, in Wayne's World. That's right, it was in Wayne's World also. Um, you might recognize it. Just another cool little lick. Okay, again, I'm just throwing you tons of licks. Piece them together. I'll piece some of them together for you. Now we're doing kind of a gallop. And that is called a push. Because you're pushing ahead of the beat. Okay, so you're just... Which adds some cool little tension. Okay, and that is just something cool. And that's showing you that you can... That 
that you can use those notes. Okay, not necessarily that you have to play Ballroom Blitz. Let's just... <laughs> Same thing with going up. When you're sneaking up on it, you can use all of them. All of a sudden you're moving like a spider. Your fingers are doing that. So you almost got this kind of spider yeah, coming at you. Uh, where's your 3D glasses when you need them? Okay, so that's just another little thing that you can stick in there. Once again, you have all these things already in D. Yeah. If you can do that lick, that is a cool one to just blast by people and freak them out. Especially if you come back up with one of these. Or go really high. <laughs> you know, you're almost in the disco territory there. That's where it would be. <laughs> okay. Again, our minor stuff. Okay, so you're doing just what we did before in every key. Uh, go up to your D, then you're just... So you're going up three frets, three, two, oh. those are valid too. So back with our drum beat. So now we have see all of them. Spider. You're giving the song room to breathe. going on. So that was just another little example of how we can do this. I'm actually going to give you that drum beat to play with. Okay, then we're going to get to um, a whole different ballpark here. Okay, so I've got you, uh, it's a five minute thing, but I'm not going to give you all of that. I'll give you a, a couple minutes of it, but just another beat to play with. Okay, so that's coming up right now. Again, we have another intro.
Okay, so there's a couple and a half minutes of that. So again, that is actually a ska beat. S-K-A, I'm sure you're familiar with it. But um, it needs to be going over strictly just to show you when, like I said, to shut up. <laughs> Give the song some room to breathe. Uh, not all of them. Sometimes you just got to go, you know, all the way to the wall with these things. <laughs> so you got to hammer them away. But then again, I have to show you the importance of letting the song breathe a little bit. So go back, jam with that one, and learn when not to play. You'll figure it out. You'll hear it, and you'll hear when you just want to play all the time. Then all of a sudden you just want to take a break. So when you want to take a break, take a break. It's up to you. <laughs> okay, so use what I just showed you there. Use what I showed you in the first part, but play it to that drum beat. Okay, because you're going to have to use all this stuff for every kind of possible beat you can imagine in the world. Okay, so we're going to keep on cruising. Okay, we're going to switch gears quite a bit here. And we're going to get back to the heavy side. And we're even going to add the concept of some distortion on your bass. Why? <laughs> it's rock, it's metal, it's whatever, man. Put it on there. Try it out. <laughs> because it's mean and it's nasty and that's what this is all about okay I'm going to show you a couple things what we're going to be working on uh, this time around uh, like I said I'm going to work with distortion whether you want to or not is up to you okay uh, we're going to work on a few little string bends some vibrato some some of that type of stuff. We're actually going to be getting into even the chord stuff. Okay, so we're going to be getting into a lot of weird stuff here. Here is, for example, some of the stuff we're going to get into. Like I said, I'm using the nasty distortion tone. Why? Because it's nasty and it's rock and roll, man. It's metal. It's whatever you want it to be. Again, I'm kind of a big kiss freak and they, uh, Gene likes to put that on every now and then. So, hey, I like it too. You get a lot of your guys using distortion now and then. So don't rule it out. That's why I'm putting it in. Okay, as far as string bending, nice, uh, Brady voice crack or string bending. Okay, we're in the key of G for this part Okay, so I'm just going F F sharp G so one two three on your frets on your low E string Then One and three on your A string Now there is the weird part is you're using your ring finger third fret A string you're bending it down towards the floor. So bend on three, release it, back to one, and three on your low E. Okay, same an octave higher. But now you have to bend upward because if you bend towards the floor, it comes off the neck. So how do you find your octave? Skip a fret, skip a string. So just like the lead guitar players would do it. <laughs> Again, if you want to do it all staccato and muting it down here. Whatever you want to do. Okay? So there's those. 
Um, another one to use in here is you're basically building off of a bar chord. If you know bar chords, cool. If you don't, this is for y'all. Right here, third fret, G. Okay, on your low E string, but that's a G note. And then the next two notes, you can actually bar your ring finger across two strings, across your A string and across your D string at the fifth fret. So you have, okay, and now we're going to so you're playing all three strings. You can let them all ring if you want, but it's nasty that low. If you bring it way up high, it's easier to deal with. Okay, so there it's acceptable, especially if it had less distortion on it. But I like it for now. <laughs> okay, so from there on, there on out. Okay, I like to play with the rest of the chord. So to finish up the G. Now our third is actually on the fourth fret on the G string. Then we can come back. Another trick, not a trick, it's actually a lick. It lines with rhymes with trick. Okay, so you hammer on from the fourth fret on your G string to the fifth, pull it back off, and then come backwards. Okay. You can even slide it up from the fifth fret to the seventh. Cool lick again. They just do everything backwards, coming back the other way. Okay, again, nice and grungy. Okay, so those are all fun little licks you can stick in here. If you want to, you can go on the A string and find your G happens to be at the 10th fret and then actually with your first finger then on the 12th fret on the D string with your ring finger and then your pinky on the 12th fret on the G string all three all three notes of course that's a bar chord you can start back uh, a whole step meaning two frets and play it there if you need to be the rhythm section you and the drummer but you want to sound more like a heavy guitar player you can sit there and do that stuff muting it down here Okay, again, these are just strictly little sniglets, and you get to put them together. I show you how they go, or how they can go. Again, I'll use all this stuff.
maybe that stuff ain't cool, man. That's just good, fun stuff. Again, give it some break somewhere. Let it breathe. But that is fun stuff. You got some distortion on there. You're just in there just melting people's faces. <laughs> anyway, so I'm really, really digging on that stuff. Again, um, a couple more things you could do within here is, I don't know if you guys are familiar with harmonics. But while you have the sustain, the distortion, the whole nine yards on, and we're in the key of G, go on your high G string, or your only G string that you have, unless you're wearing one, in which case, I hope it's not on backwards. Don't want to split up your boys. Um, go up to your G string, if you have distortion on or not, go right above the 12th fret. Don't push down. I want you on top of the fret, not pushing. I want you just to touch it barely with the lightest touch. Hit your string and let loose of it. Let you touch it, hit it, and pull it off. So you're just touching it. You're not pushing down at all. You're just putting your finger on it. If you're doing it wrong, it'll go. Okay, you just go. But once you get it, if you get, you'll watch it. Nothing. So you can get above that. And it's just right there. Especially with distortion on. And again, you can do it at the 7th fret. And then again at the 5th. So, 12, 7, 5. So if you're in G or whatever, um, you'll find out if you're in D, of course, do it on the D string. Okay, so if you have call for it, check it out in context. fun little stuff um, with distortion with harmonics with using little chord things again the bends okay the the uh, there's so many things I want to do one other thing and I'll actually wait for the next one uh, we'll just go in back in A. But anyway, um, I got a very, some, very, very something cool lined up for you. So we're going to play this track. Let's see how long this dude is. It's actually four minutes long. It's actually worth the whole track. This is a good, 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 just solid rock track to play with. So four minutes of this coming up, then we're going to do our last set of uh, licks and everything, okay? So here's your four minute backing track. Use everything you've learned so far. Cram it together. This is, this is rehearsal. That's why you <laughs> pick up these videos to learn and to rehearse with. So here we go. Four minutes of this. And we have an intro again. Ah, oh, sounds like the Brady Bunch with their tambourine. Come on, Cindy. Bobby. Marsha. My nose. My nose. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha.
there you go. A great beat to practice with. Once again, you've got three whole sections of stuff to work with all of these beats. We're going to do another whole section. Okay, so hang on and we'll get into some more. Here we go. Okay, for our final leg of this tour, um, we're going to be back in the key of A. A lot of this is showboating or showing off. <laughs> okay, but hey, that's what we're here for, to really get uh, some of this crazy stuff down. Okay, what we're going to do in the key of A, I'm going to give you an example of our drum beat. This thing is honking on. Okay, here's what we'll be playing. So we're really, really, really honking on. Okay, so if you remember the band Yes, uh, cool. If not, go check them out. As a bass player, you need to be uh, checking them guys out. Um, as far as our A stuff, okay, so go on your A string. Uh, look for my fret markers. They're kind of dark on this particular bass. Um, so it's going to be A, then low E. Okay, so we're doing a hammer-on and pull-off on the low E from open to the second fret, hammer-on, and then pull-off again, and then right back to your A string. Okay, A string, low E, hammer-on, pull-off, back to A. Okay, what we can also do... So you're doing hammer on pull off on where I had you doing it on your low E, then on your A, then on your E, then right back to A. Okay, that's a hard one to get used to. But this is the kind of stuff that you would get Chris Squire. Check out Chris Squire. Uh, Google him if you have to. I know I'm old, but good bass players are good bass players. Again, slowly. That's all it is, but doing it quick. So slow, really slow. Okay, and again, we're gonna do this. Okay, so you're doing it on your D string. Same thing, second fret. And then open and hammer on and stop on the second fret on your G string. Okay, you can do the same thing also right from there. And then stop there. And then stop on that note on your A. And then come back down. Okay, so you have. And then. Okay, cool stuff. Okay, so that has something to work on, but that's all it is. And then... Okay, one last time, there. Same thing on the low ones. Okay. Any way you want to do it. Okay. And that's all I was playing. Um, check it out again against that beat. I'll do roughly that same stuff.
fun thing is nothing. So open E, second fret, A, string, again on the low thing. So you go. Just whatever feels good down there, but it's just an open E string. Second fret, open again. Second fret again, A string, but just stop on the A string. There, that thing from our very first lesson is showing up again with the third fret. Okay? So third fret, second, open. Three two one, three two zero. Well, that's how that stuff can work in there. Okay, another thing I had done in here earlier. This stuff is actually very useful. You just have to find your way. Find your way, grasshopper. <laughs> okay, there was a little thing that went like this. stuff is just a straight uh, pentatonic uh, blues scale. Okay, so if you're going up to A, I know that sounds like a bunch of uh, Japanese to some of you. Okay, so you're going up to the 14th fret on your G string, your A. Okay, these are hammer-ons and pull-offs. So you're doing your 14th fret with your ring finger. You got your first finger waiting in the wings at the 12th fret. 12, 14, 12, then 11, 12, 11, then 10, I'm sorry, 9, 11, 9, then follow the dots, 7, 9, 7, now we switch it up and go 6, 7, 6, then 4, 6, 4, and then down to the 2, and then open A string. bar across to A and the next string on the second fret and then your low string. Okay, so if you let your low A string ring while you're doing this you'll be able to know if you screw up and you'll probably screw up right here. No, that's not it. So, again, just to show you 12, 14, 12, 11, 12, 11, 9, 11, 9, 7, 9, 7, 6, 7, 6, 4, 6, 4, and then finally back to 2. Okay? And you can do that however you want. You don't have to do the whole, that whole thing. You could do parts of it. Or take it up an octave higher. Okay, so that's all the fun there. So play those with the track.
So we're going to let that track play for you. Um, cool track. Again, it's uh, three minutes, and then we're going to get out of here. Okay? So here comes the track. So play all that and everything else, but stick it in whatever key you want. Okay? Uno, dos, tres, dos. <laughs> anyway, uh, too much light. Uh, get down here on y'all's level. Once again, Scott Grove, man, have fun with all them licks. I know it's a bunch to work on, but that's what this one's about. Um, showboating and getting crazy, getting down and dirty, getting mean, uh, playing your little butt off. No longer just going boom, 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 pretending like you're doing something. You're actually going to be the star of the show with these licks. Okay, so once again, Scott Grove, if you guys ever want any kind of videos, uh, feel free to request them. I am more than open to requests. Okay, so you guys take care, have fun with those, get back, practice your little booty off. Okay, take care. <laughs> Bye.